What's going on, everybody? Alongside TJ Calkins, Jay Sannon here with ATS, breaking down the UFC Vegas 38 card, another UFC fight night going down in Vegas, TJ. And I know you've got three plays on the way for this card that is, of course, headlined by Santos versus Walker. We'll get to that fight in just a little bit. But first, we will start on the women's side. Casey O'Neill, a minus 220 favorite, taking on Antonina Shevchenko. I want to get your thoughts on this fight to start us off. Boy, this should essentially be viewed as a striker versus grappler matchup. And we've only seen Casey O'Neill uh, have two fights so far in the UFC, but my God, is she heavy on top? She knows what she's doing on the floor. She knows how to finish. She's finished both fights on the floor. And we've seen Shevchenko, her losses in the UFC have been by two grapplers. It was a take her down controller, uh, Andrea Lee, even got her out of there with that nasty triangle armbar. Uh, situation in the last fight, and Andrea Lee even said if she didn't get that, she was spent done, so that was good to see, but uh, I think Casey O'Neill is going to be more traditional. She's just going to uh, advance position. She's going to drop ground and pound. She's going to work towards chokes, and what we're going to see is O'Neill probably get hit a little bit in the first couple of minutes of the fight until she gets the fight down, and then it's just going to be an entirely different fight. Um, <clears throat> so Hanko will not be able to get back to her feet. I, I can't emphasize enough how heavy O'Neal is on top. She's just so good. She, she's going to control her, and she's going to end rounds like that. So even if she doesn't get the finish, she's going to win the fight, but I truly think the finish is going to come. And with that being the case, I love the ITD line. You get the minus 220 favorite at plus 140. Uh, you could even get aggressive, super aggressive, and better by submission. I didn't look at what that figure is, but I, I like the ITD line. Next up, TJ Nico Price, a minus 170 favorite, taking on Alex Oliveira, fight at 170 pounds. I want to know what you think there. Yeah, this should be a wild fight. I mean, this is two guys that that'll, are willing to be reckless and just brawl. Although Nico Price, he keeps it controlled, but he's definitely the far more durable of the two fighters. And he has the better force of will. I believe he's going to be the one pushing forward, advancing the entire time. He's going to keep uh, Alex Oliveira on his back foot, which is going to take a lot of the danger uh, out of the Alex Oliveira game plan. Now, after Nico starts lighting him up, I think uh, Cowboy Oliveira is going to reactively wrestle. I, I don't think he's going to be able to push Nico back or anything and, you know, set up takedowns against the cage or anything like that. But he's going to try. I don't think he's going to succeed. The good thing about that is Oliveira's gas tank is extremely questionable. And I think Nico, especially when you Put the pace and damage together that he's going to put on Oliveira. Uh, it's going to get very ugly towards the end. I think Nico gets a finish, but I don't think there's a lot of value in going from the flat line to the ITD line. So I think Nico Price flat is there. Next up, TJ, a fight that is at even odds to end inside the distance. Kevin Holland, a minus 155 favorite, taking on Kyle Dawkins. I know this is your final wager on this card. Let me know what you think on this fight. Yeah, I, I'm a big Kevin Holland fan, so there, there's probably some bias there. And we know what the hole in his game is. You know, he fights a wrestler, he gets taken down. You know, while Dawkins is a great grappler, he's not a wrestler. You know, he, he's going to be uh, more looking for trip takedowns, that sort of thing. He's not going to hit a blast double and, you know, freaking put, put Holland on his back, Matt return him like that. Uh, he probably will work better on top of some of the wrestlers that Holland has fought. But I don't think he's going to have the success in the takedowns. You know, Dawkins is used to being taller and longer than everyone he fights. Well, he's actually given up five inches of reach to Holland here. And Holland is a much better striker. He's much more athletic. He's much more powerful. So this fight is going to be decided in the stand-up. And I think Holland is going to decide it for himself in the stand-up. He's just going to be so much busier. He's going to hurt Dawkins. So we're going to take Kevin Holland minus 155. And I am ready to put all of those... Uh, all those takedowns and uh, all that time where he didn't get back to his feet when he should have uh, behind us and hope we're moving forward there. Now, TJ, I know you don't have a play on it, but I do want to get your thoughts on the main event. Tiago Santos, Johnny Walker, Santos, a minus 165 favorite. Do you think Santos leaves Johnny Walker blue in this fight? I like that. Man, Diago Mahara Santos has been one of my favorite fighters for a long time. I mean, the man is an animal. He's a killer. But he's not looking the same since the pair of knee surgeries. Um, I will say the fight against Glover Teixeira 
it was another spot where he knocked Glover unconscious and what Glover Glover did, what Glover does, he goes from unconscious to finding a submission. <laughs> and it's just, it's uncanny the way he has an ability to do that. But, you know, uh, the Rackage fight, that, that one looked kind of alarming for me. So I'm starting to wonder at 37 years old, if he's slowing down too much. Uh, I still think he's an extremely dangerous fighter. It, it's kind of matching two speed boulders running into each other here and walker is the younger more athletic fighter at this point um i will say if walker doesn't get the job done in the first round the gas tank might not be there i think um had has got the better gas tank <laughs> i don't think there's any way we see this fight go five rounds but if we do see it getting into the second third round i think had can start using some wrestling uh walker has been controlled he's lost fights that way so we could see how to do some work on the floor if I had to bet, I bet this fight doesn't make it out of the first round. I think it's going to be absolute fireworks from the word go. It's going to be utter entertainment. Uh, if you're looking for the best value play of the fight, it's going to be Johnny Walker inside a distance at plus 180. But I'm going to sit this one out and just absolutely enjoy it. I mean, this this for a fight night card, this card is freaking awesome. I am ready for it. And I wish there were more bets for it, but I absolutely want to watch. Well, I guess sometimes it's better to sit back and watch as a fan than to have too many bets yeah. on the card, right? Yeah, just sweat, sweat all the DraftKings lineups and go from there. Well, good luck to you, and of course, good luck to everybody else on their UFC bets this weekend. Of course, for more on this card from TJ, be sure to check out ATS.io, written previews of all the fights that we just talked about. Until next time, TJ Calkins and Jay Sanon saying, see you next time. Good luck on your UFC action.